Now that we can control one column in our LED matrix, we can use the same technique to turn on the other two columns. But before we do that, let's be a bit more explicit with our code. First, let's move the code about turning on our anode, just before the sleep method. Now after two seconds, we are done with that anode, so we should turn that off by setting it low. Next, let's add in code for cathodes 0 and 1. We wanted both of those to turn on, so we need to set both of them to low. So now we have one area where we talk about our cathodes. We set our cathodes here to low, high, low. So that will be on, off, on. And then in our next part, we turn on that column, we wait for some time, and we turn off. Now this code doesn't change the output for our program, but it will help us for how we need to write the code for the next two columns in the LED matrix. In fact, I'll just copy and paste the code two more times. So let's set this up so that we are making, how about, the symbol 5 on a die. That is, all four corners lit up and the center lit up as well. So far we're good. We've got the two corners lit up. We turn on the first anode. For our second column, we only want the middle one to light. And of course, now we're talking about anode 1. So we need to turn anode 1 on and then anode 1 off. And then lastly, we want to turn on that third column. We want to turn on those corners again, so we'll keep the same pattern. But now we're talking about the third column, which is in our array at position 2. One other change I'm going to make is the sleep time. Instead, I'm going to have a variable called sleep time, and I'll replace wherever I've written down 2. Now at the beginning of my program, I can make a new variable. Of course, I'll call this one sleep time. And I can set that to whatever delay I want. I actually don't want two seconds, that's a little bit long. So how about half a second? Okay, let's give that a try. Okay, that worked pretty well, but I would like to have the code repeat. We can do this pretty easily with a while loop. A while loop will continue so long as whatever statement we have here is true. And of course, true is always true, so this loop will go on forever. Now so far nothing is in our while loop, so I'll need to tab everything out so that Python knows what's in the loop. The only problem with this is that our loop will go on forever, and we'll actually never make it to this gpio.cleanup. Now of course we can press Ctrl Z at any point to stop our Python program, but if we can't clean up our pins, we'll be leaving some LED lights on. What we need is something called a try accept block. We first simply say try. Now anything in try will be tried by the Python program. Now of course to include this, I also need to tab it in. So I need to put another set of tabs for each of these commands. So now Python is trying everything that I've put into that try block. Now it will try it except if one thing happens. So I say except there is a keyboard interrupt. And now I simply put GPIO cleanup into that section of the accept block. Now my LED matrix will do one of two things. It will either be lighting the LEDs, or if somebody does a keyboard interrupt like Control Z, then it will say, okay, I'll clean up, but then the program's over. I don't go back into this. Let's give this a try. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now something to quickly point out Actually, you should use Control c when you end this program. If you use Control z you'll get kicked out right away and there will be no cleanup. If you use Control c that will be the accept clause, and then you'll have your cleanup method run. Okay, one last thing then that I want to change here. I actually want just to show the symbol for 5. And right now it's going too slowly for that. So let's change the sleep time to something like 0.001. Now hopefully that will be a short enough time that my eyes won't be able to actually recognize that the columns are getting lit individually. Let's see. There we have it, a successfully multiplexed LED matrix.